Welcome to Art Chew. This is Beth Brown coming to you from Griffin Art, deep in the heart of West Texas. It's Wednesday. It's March. I have coffee. I always do. I have a Coke mug today. Nothing special. No coffee mug history to report, as it were. Uh, how are you? What's going on with you? Uh, I have a few things to review today. Nothing major. But I have a thought developing in my head. I always like to use up products that I have uh, before I buy a bunch of new things. Now, I like new stuff. I'm, I'm not going to lie about that. I love to shop for art supplies. I love to look on, online for art supplies. I like to try out new stuff. Um, however, I'm thinking of doing a, a process video that's called Something Old Made New, okay? And just using all of my old stuff, stuff I already have on hand, to make something new. Hopefully a canvas or a canvas panel or, um, you know, I typically tend to steer toward art journal pages because they're easy for me. And I don't want to always do the thing that's easy. I want to stretch myself and I want to be able to grow. And speaking of stretching and growing, I'm taking a little online um, class called Abstract Florals with Donna Downey. Uh, and I have a couple of completed little ones that I'll show you. And I'm posting pictures in that group on Facebook. And I might I might post them to Instagram. If you're on Instagram, I would appreciate it if you would follow me. Uh, so for our first study, we did a, a little hydrangea. Hydrangea? Hydrangea? Anyway, put the emphasis in the right place. And here's mine. My first one. Ooh, glare. There you go. How does that, how's that taking you? That look okay? So there's my first one. This is my second one, which is really exactly the same, only it's pointing the other direction. And my third one in that study, I just flipped the colors and made the flower blue and the background purple. I don't like this one very much. Um, and then I decided I was tired of those and did a little... I guess it's I guess it's a poppy and some oranges here. Uh, I liked this one a lot. And for ease sake, the the class is using six by six acrylic paper, uh, heavy body acrylics, which I have a few. I don't have a huge library of heavy bodied acrylics, um, and we're really playing with your interpretation of the flower um, for this first, we've only had one lesson. So for that first lesson, we've really been playing with your interpretation of the flower, um, how you see the light hitting it, shading, um, not, it wasn't so much focused on hold your brush this way, load it this way, use these colors. It was more about getting used to the feel of portraying what you see. And I appreciated that quite a bit. And we were really encouraged to play. I'm going to do a couple of more this week, I think. Um, but I don't know which flowers to select. Uh, that's where Pinterest will come in handy. Um, Google's always a, a, a fun help. And I hesitate to uh, paint other people's pictures without their permission. And I guess if, you know, you've thrown it up on Google and it's out in the Internet for the whole world to see and you're not going to sell it. Um, I guess that's okay. If if I have a picture in my own mind and I don't use something for reference, I feel comfortable selling that or making it a print. But if it comes out of somebody else's head, I don't know. It just That seems a little like you should ask permission first. But that's just me. That's not everybody. Oh, you can see my vape. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so that, that's been my, my bigger project. Um, I use... Primarily Liquitex heavy body acrylics. Um, they look like this. Uh, this is bright aqua green, one that was recommended for the class. I did not go out and buy everything that was recommended for the class. I um, plan to use a lot of what I already have. The Liquitex heavy bodies run about seven dollars. Um, they're nice and creamy, um, and I've mentioned. Cinnamon Cooney before, the Art Sherpa. She has a wonderful YouTube channel. I'll give you some linky love to Cinnamon's channel. 
and she does some light fast testing over across brands. Uh, she does Liquitex. She does Golden. I also have, I only have four Golden Heavy Body Acrylics because they tend to be a little more pricey. Here's the Golden. They have a metal tube instead of a plastic tube. This is green gold. I love this color. Green is my favorite. I always say that. Um, anyway, Cinnamon's video tests across a bunch of brands. She does the Golden. She does the Liquitex. I think she does the Grumbacher. She does some store brands. I know she does the store brand from Michaels. I think she does, um, I want to say Windsor and Newton, but I don't know if they carry a heavy body acrylic. They're primarily watercolors. Anyway, I'll link to that video. It's a great video. Uh, so this in this class, we're using primarily heavy body acrylics. I keep a big tube of heavy body white because a, a titanium white because you'll use the I use this a lot more to I'm I'm seeing the alerts pop up on my computer. I should really shut that off when I'm doing this. Um, use a lot of white to brighten and um, tone down uh, other colors. So I, I use this a lot. I keep a big tube of it. The big tubes are a little more, this one was $12.99, uh, but it lasts me a while, and that's why I get a big tube of it. Uh, also with heavy body acrylics, when I started using acrylics, I bought primary colors, and I had the chance to talk to my daughter's Girl Scout troop. They're working on earning their art badge, and I it's awesome because I get to lead some of those, and I think it's a blast and see the girls get excited about it and talk about it and they think it's fun because they get to give their hands something to do and get a little messy but uh, I taught them about primary colors this last week and so when I first started that's what I bought because theoretically you can mix every other color from red and blue and yellow um, I have found that to be a little burdensome especially when companies will do it for you um, but it's kind of fun so that's what I bought in the beginning, uh, was a cad red, a cad yellow, and a, a phthalo blue in a green shade. I don't know why blues have a green shade and a greens have a blue shade, unless it has something to do. I know that yellow and blue make green, but I, I don't know. Anyway, so those, those three were the ones that I bought to get started. I have branched out. I have a violet. I have the teals. Um, I have a, a an orange, but I don't, and I have a burnt umber, I think, and I, but I don't keep a ton of heavy body acrylics because I can get, you can get by really with only just a few if acrylics are something that you're interested in. Um, and it's brought my attention, this workshop has really brought my attention back to my brushes. Um, and I'll talk to you about brushes for a minute. This is my big jar for my tall brushes. Uh, I can't really say that I have a favorite at this point. I don't think I've experienced a broad enough spectrum to have a favorite brush. Aside from my little um, crafty brushes from Michaels. And if I'm doing a, a canvas or something, I generally don't use these except to apply gesso or gel medium or something like that because I'm okay if they get junky. I feel okay if they get junky. And I have some other junkies. These are um, no name, no, no, no name. Sorry, brand, whoever created this. I don't mean to be rude. Uh, and I use these for washes, bigger washes and uh, big gessoing larger surfaces. And these shed really bad. Um, yeah, it's coming off in my hand. They shed pretty bad. I have to go back in with my little craft tweezers and pick bristles out. So these, these, Utility brushes are more what I think of those as. Um, in my large, br larger and nicer brushes, I do have some Catalyst brushes. Catalyst is is a by Princeton brushes. Um, they are a real multimedia brush. Um, the tip, the the handle is well, it's just flipping cool. It's nice and fat, and it's light, and it's wooden, and it makes you feel like you're doing a good job. They're fairly expensive, which is why I only have a few. And I just add, you know, once or twice a year, I'll add. This is a, a number 10 Filbert. The bristles are a lot stiffer 
Uh, Donna talks about these br these brushes being a lot stiffer, and they really are. Um, the paint comes off of them well. And I have um, a number eight filbert in the same. It's a little smaller. I'll show them to you next to each other. See? There, that's better. Uh, I also have a number six flat. And I think that's it. Mm -hmm. That's all as far as Catalyst. Um, also in the big brushes, I have a couple, I have some oil brushes. Uh, these are Windsor and Newton. I have a number eight round, a number six short and flat, and a number six filbert. These are my oil brushes. Oil bristles are fairly fine, but still kind of stiff. And I've always heard that you only use your oil brushes for oils. You don't cross them back and forth. Uh, I have only dabbled in oils. I only have four tubes of oil paint, again, in those primaries and a white. Um, and they take for bloody ever to dry. I know that you can use speed drying agents like uh, I think linseed or something like that. And I don't use real turpentine. I use the turpenoid, the fake stuff that doesn't stink. Uh, don't use water with your oil brushes or oil paints. Use turpentine or terps, as people like to call them. Oh, I do have another catalyst brush in here. Ha! Huh. This is tiny. This is a number four filbert. I'm a fan of the filbert tip, if you couldn't tell. So, I have four catalyst. Um, I also like the brand Simply Simmons. Uh, I first heard about those also through Cinnamon Cooney, the Art Sherpa. They are not bargain basement, but not high, high, high end. Um, they are affordable price point. This is my big one. This is a number 50 flat. Uh, primarily I use for washes and larger surfaces. Besides, it's just fun, right? Um, these are available at Hobby Lobby. Um, the Windsor and Newtons are also available at most major craft outlets. The Catalysts, I've only been able to find at art supply stores. The Catalyst brushes. Now, you can find Catalyst tools like the spatulas. Uh, these guys are Catalyst. I, I can find these at craft stores. Uh, but the brushes, I've only been able to find online and through art supply stores. Uh, but anyway, the Simply Simmons has a, a white um, acrylic handle. And it's, it's, again, it's nice and fat. It feels really good in your hand. This one's kind of heavy because it's a big guy. Um, also from Simply Simmons, I have, um, this is a number 12 round. And I use this primarily for watercolor because of the nice round um, barrel or the nice round bristles. The barrel is a good size. It's nice and short. It's easy to control. Um, and I like this for watercolor. Um, other Simply Simmons that I have, I have a ton, ton, ton of brushes, and a lot of them are mostly cheapos, so I'm not going to show them all to you. Other Simply Simmons that I have, I have a number six filbert. That's pretty small. I have a number six round. And look how long those bristles are. It's a little harder to control, I'm going to be honest with you, but I like it. I think those were in a, a package together, and I do have a short flat. This is a half inch flat from Simply Simmons. That one's had a lot of love. I've done a lot of the Art Sherpa's tutorials with that one. Um, I have a Windsor and Newton watercolor. This is a round. I like this guy. And anything else worth mentioning? This is a Princeton. This is a watercolor brush also. And you can adjust the uh, grippy. You can slide it on there. That's pretty neat. And I have uh, also by Princeton's um, economy line called Snap. I have a flat shader. That's pretty fun. Is that it? Yeah, pretty much for the good for the good brushes. The rest of these all are from like variety packs at the craft store. And, you know, they're okay for what they're made for. 
they're not going to last forever. They're not meant to last forever. Um, and, and I've had these. Oh, here's another Simply Simmons I forgot. This is a quarter inch um, sword. Sword? A quarter inch striper. It's got an angle. I would just call it an angle. Anyway, those are my brushes. And I do keep some water brushes around. The ones that you fill with water, I've shown those before. So that's brushes. This workshop has got me interested in looking at brushes again these days. I do want to show you, oh, I had one more I was going to show before I get started. Put all these guys back where they belong. Uh, this is also by Princeton. This is Princeton Select. I think these are a little bit newer. Uh, this is a three-quarter inch flat. It's nice. It has a blue handle, teal handle. A lot of them seem to. Right now it's a popular color. Okay. Uh, at Target, I found in the office supply this holder. See? And it's plain brown kind of craft. And I think I'm going to cover this with some of my jelly prints. Um, but I really am liking this. And it's got a spot in the back where I put my ink tense blocks and, and my uh, pit brush markers are back here. And they all kind of just fit right in and it sits right for me. And it's, it's uh, fairly space saving. I think it was eight or nine dollars. I found some really awesome Wonder Woman stickers. I love comic books. And I found these Wonder Woman stickers yesterday and I thought they were fun. They were a buck. That's always awesome. So I'm back interested in the brushes. I'm back interested in looking at paint. What else? I know I bought something else. It's not coming to me. I have no idea. Oh well, anyway, uh, go over to thecraftshack.com and read my friend Heather's blog this week. It's Holy Week, for those of you who participate in such things, Easter is coming, and uh, I was deeply moved by the piece that she did yesterday on craft it live you can see my play along on the table behind me i'm not gonna i'm not gonna show it to you because uh heather's is better it really is and i don't want to take away from what she presented in yesterday's craft it live but if you follow me on instagram i might post a picture um and i might i might post it to facebook i don't know but i really enjoyed and i played along yesterday i don't always play along with what they do there, but I did yesterday and it was, it was lovely. I enjoyed it. I'm going to go to a Monday Thursday service tomorrow with some friends over at uh, All Saints Episcopal School. I'm looking forward to that. Going to my church on Friday for Good Friday, spending some time with family for Easter. Um, I look forward to that. I do every year. Um, this is probably my favorite time of year. I love the spring. I love the anticipation for summer because I love summertime as well. Um, Christmas and Thanksgiving, it's okay. I have mixed feelings about that time of year, so I just try to get through it. This is the time of year that I really feel renewed. And an update on my Lenten fasting. I am, <laughs> on Easter Sunday, I am making the largest pot of spaghetti that you have ever seen in your life. Um, I avoided pasta all through Lent and did not keep up with my Bible art journal like I had wanted to, but kind of moved that into some other things that are a little more accessible to me. Um, I did have the chance to become a little more mindful of what I'm doing each day. And uh, I'll probably, I'm at 19 minutes. I'll probably talk about that next time. Um, keeping my bullet journal and beginning a morning routine to put me in a more positive frame of mind each day and to be mindful of what I'm doing throughout the day in addition to keeping up with the things that I need to get done. Uh, but I, I stuck to my Lenten pasta fast sans one meal because I was in someone's home and was served it and was not about to be rude. 
and say, I'm sorry, I can't eat this. I wasn't going to do that. Um, and I am really looking forward to a big bowl of noodles. I might eat it all. My kids love it. Jeremy doesn't. Jeremy, I said his name. That's my husband. Uh, Jeremy doesn't eat it that much. Uh, he's not a fan. But my, my mom's family is Italian. And it, I might as well have noodles in my veins instead of blood. That and salami. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're having a great day. Get out. Do something. Make something. And always, my friends, remember to give love.